Adventist Review, Adventist World, we are, all, we are one team. And uh, on Wednesdays in worship, we present to the Lord all, literally, all the letters that have come in over the past week from all around the world. And we pray for the issues that we are asked to pray for. And we thank God when we get letters that say, God has heard your prayers and this is how we know. A constant feature of our prayers on those Wednesday mornings is for a letter writer from Kenya. I don't know if he's here. I don't know if he knows I'm here. If I knew where he was, I would go and look for him. All I have in my head to go by is Asa. Asa. A-S-A. Asa. If you know somebody named Asa who is fervently dedicated to working for Jesus, whether he has support or not, I think Sometimes Asa may have had or perhaps sometimes Asa may have hoped he could have support from a local conference or a union so he could be a lay pastor and work in his part of the vineyard of the Lord. If, if you know who that is, please, or if you are Asa, Asa, please identify with me because when I go back, they are going to say, did you find Asa? So if you are Asa, or if you can help me find Asa, please do. Because one of the reasons I came here was to find Asa. What are we talking about today? Today it's Hezekiah and Josiah. Hezekiah and Josiah. What did we start with? Hmm? How did we begin? Who did we begin with? Abraham? Oh, you, no. Was it Abraham? Was it? Uh, was it Isaac? Was it Rebecca? Was it Rachel? Who did we begin with? Or I'll give you a clue. It was a pair of cousins. Enoch and Enoch and Lamech, Lamech, whatever. Lamech is more authentic. I, I say Lamech, but Lamech is... What, okay. So... What united Lamech or Lamech and Enoch? Hmm? You don't remember what their connection was? They were cousins. They were cousins from the same generation. Fifth cousins, but cousins. And one of them made God proud. And one of them achieved the heights of success in his time. Had great smart kids who invented stuff that we still benefit from today. Uh, Lamech's sons, one of his sons was the first to invent the technology for producing bronze. And another of his sons was, was the first to invent the organ so Lamech was right up and he was also a murderer and he could brag about it he was the top of the line out there you know everybody cannot commit murder and brag about it and still get off but Lamech could so in the world out there he was all right but thank God we learned through Enoch that grace is as old as, amen. Grace is as old as mine and yours, yours and mine, our beginnings. Then we talked about Abraham and 
Abraham and yes somebody say it Abraham and Isaac yes Abraham and Isaac and uh, what was our takeaway from Abraham and Isaac Abraham was good but only Jesus saves we'll be kind of repeating that today because it's worth repeating we will talk about a different pair but we will kind of make that point then we talked about mother-in-law and daughter-in-law and the intriguing thing about this is that they really never met but both of them were women with initiative what kind of initiative is the interesting part initiatives to bring about what God had said but doing it by their own genius they were smart women they were also beautiful women you read the entire Old Testament you will find that there are about seven people that are actually described the Bible is not in the surface but surface can really make you admire a God of love when you see the beautiful stuff that comes from his hand and uh, without intending to I'm thinking I may have mentioned all of them because it's Rachel and Rebecca and David and Sarah and Moses almost all of them have some way or other got into our series this week our series wasn't about handsome men and beautiful women but the handsome guys and beautiful women got in there be that as it may what do we learn from Sarah and Rebecca hmm? what do we learn from Sarah and Rebecca somebody's gonna say it yes even for Sarah and every time we say it we need to think two things one the first impression oh is this a this is this saying that Sarah was in no 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 that is not what it's saying two what is it really saying I don't want us to forget what it isn't saying because that's important if we can remember what it isn't saying we won't be using the Word of God to try to belittle and this people <laughs> in Guyana one of the ways to express your righteous indignation about somebody who's been messing with your whatever it be your property your cows your daughter your husband you meet them on the road and you say I'm gonna say or I'm gonna read a psalm on you I, I, I don't know if people read psalms on people in Kenya you know, I'm gonna read a psalm you know, and you tremble in your boots because some, we use God we just use God and all the twisted perverse elements of our fallen nature character show up and we put God on it like Rebecca I'm gonna read a psalm on you we want to be vengeful and spiteful so we take the Bible anyway remembering what it is not is important but also of course remembering what it is saying what is it saying it is saying that there is no physical or other extremity to which sin can take us that God cannot redeem us from there is no need in your life material social physical intellectual there is no need in your life or in your experience that God cannot supply he commits to supplying all your need not according to the puny limited imagination of fallen Caesars but according to his rich is in glory by Christ Jesus whatever it is ask him and it's available if you ask according to his will 
he will give you. Let's, let's round that off. If you ask for microphones and PA systems according to his will, he will give you what you needed when you said mics and uh, speakers. Sometimes we think he doesn't answer our prayers because we ask for a microphone and uh, he gave us a voice. Or we asked for a voice and uh, he gave us great Dolby speakers. So let's make this clear. He says, I will give you the desires of your heart. You, Jeremiah says, don't always know what is in your heart. So you sincerely pray to him. The language you use, the words you use, the nouns you utter are your best expression of what really is there. But he knows what is there. So he doesn't have to use the word you used to demonstrate his commitment to you. Amen? Amen, somebody. Let us not be believing he doesn't answer and these phrases and expressions and sentences are motar, Guyanese, motar, stuff. You can say anything you want. It doesn't have to have a backup or stuff. This is not God shooting off his mouth. This is God saying, this is how I am. And I guarantee. All right. For that reason, giving up on God doesn't make sense. Quitting is not your option. Grace is. You know, there are three and a half supporters of the idea of vocal participation in the sermon. And all three and a half of them are sitting over here. At least that is what my ears keep saying all the time. Everybody can get involved with those who already are. Quitting is not your option. Come on. Ooh, screen. Next, school is in session. Yeah, God wants to teach us stuff, whatever it is. Jephthah needed to learn stuff. Um, he had the wrong thing in his head, but he was sincere. Anyway, God doesn't see like humans see. God doesn't see like Caesar sees. God sees, and a lot of the time Caesar cannot see. He can't even see where his glasses are, so he can use them to see. School is in session. Isn't that beautiful? I think everybody likes that one. I don't know. Every time we get to this one, there's a chorus. Praise God. School is in session. Am I registered? Saving grace is different from Jephthah's righteousness. The universe has only one, one source. Yahweh. We didn't say anything about what Yahweh means. He simply says he identifies with that name. And when he calls that name on you, you need to understand that there's power coming through. You see, Yahweh means I'm always here. You know, Jesus Christ, Hebrews 13, 8, the same yesterday and today and forever those understandings are all comprehended in that name Yahweh I'm, I'm never gonna be missing or even if you think you can't find me I'm never gonna need to be brought up to date on what is going on I'm Yahweh I'm there I'm here I know when he comes to Moses he says I heard what my people were going through and I remembered I made a promise to Abraham, I'm not going to let my people down. Because we let him down. And nevertheless, and I got these reversed. But that's fine. Jesus makes the difference that really matters. The distinction is not between Central and New Life, or between East Kenya and West or between Kenya and Tanzania, where I got my shirt from, or between Africa and Europe. The difference is between Jesus and all the rest. So, let's line up with Jesus. Let's let him call us. Let's answer to what he wants us to answer to. From the beginning to the end, I am Alpha and Omega. You know, Omega is the last letter. 
but I like to say Omega because that's the big O. Mega means grand. I don't know if naming the letters of their alphabet, the Greeks had that in mind. but it is altogether likely that at least they had the literal understanding in mind because there's a letter named Omicron, which is O micron, small. And then there's this other letter at the end, which is Omega, which is O big. I don't know if they had any, I, I, they probably didn't you know about Jesus being yesterday, today, tomorrow, God being the big one. The beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega. This is Scripture's writers. This is the Holy Spirit telling them this is something to work with to get some idea out to the people about who and how God is. Jesus makes the difference that really matters from O micron to Oh, wow. That's Omega. And then. The answer is because we are. Why is Jesus going to come down the sky one of these days, rip it open and come through with thousands and myriad of angels and split the graves open? You know, of course, all of that is just vivid, dramatic, metaphorical speech because God doesn't need to split anything open. People who have disintegrated to nothingness and those who have been chewed up and swallowed down by whales in the ocean or by sharks or whatever, he is going to recreate. Why? because daddy wants his kids back home that is what the doctrine of the second advent is all about daddy wants his kids back home the answer is because we are and he always intended for the family to be together I've been telling you how unfair life is this week. My daughter is there. My son is there. His wife is there. Their daughter. They're all with my wife. And they're all having a wonderful time. And I'm all the way over here. Well, I'm over here. They wish they could be in Kenya. They do. My wife said to me, we're talking. She says, wait, how come I didn't get to go to Kenya? We said, so, well, you have a consolation prize. You have your kids. Anyway, all right. And last night, what was the last one? The Lord, what was last night? The Lord, the Lord is my, come on, la, the Lord is, you want to say the Lord is my shepherd. But salvation is full of paradoxes. The Lord is my shepherd. In this context, the Lord is my sheep. Serve him. And of course, we like that because it's double entendre. But what do you mean serve him? Serve him means work for him. And that's the standard command. Serve God with heart, soul, mind, and strength. But in this understanding, we talk about Gabigail dressing up sheep so men can eat to the full and forget that they were angry because they were actually hungry. Get their hunger supplied and their anger goes away. He said, the way they say to a man's heart is to, well, the way to a man's heart is through his eyes. So Abigail dressed up the sheep and Abigail dressed up too. Do you know what happened after Abigail's husband, the fool, whose name was fool. Do you know what happened after Nabal died? Yeah, the same boss man, she came and bowed down to with her face to the ground. She says, I'm sorry, I messed up. The fault is mine. Please don't worry about my husband. He does stupid things. But I'm sorry, it was me. I brought some food for you. You know what happened? David never forgot the woman at his feet. Once Nabal was off the scene, David sent and said, would you marry me? Yeah. So that is not in the Bible, but I'm sure it is in the Bible story. Given what the Bible says about Abigail and what we know about David, I'm sure she didn't just dress the sheep. 
fed you it. The Lord is my sheep. Come on. The Lord is my sheep. Serve him. Not just work for the Lord. Serve him. I want that. That's the food I want. And Jesus says in John 6, my flesh is bread indeed. My blood is drink indeed. If you won't eat the flesh of the Son of Man, you do not have any life in you. So, the Lord is my sheep. Eat him. Okay, Hezekiah and Josiah. Yeah, these messages have been taking more and more.